Hello everybody and welcome to another video tutorial. For this week's tutorial I will be working on uh, the White Rabbit's house essentially for my Alice in Wonderland horror. Uh, so I'm doing a rough concept today and I will be finishing up the line work uh, hopefully for next week. If not it might be actually split up into two parts depending on how busy I am. So as you can see right now I start off by blocking out some really basic shadows. So I essentially have a brush that I've uh, lowered the opacity uh, so that when I'm drawing I can slowly increase uh, the amount of darkness uh, that I'm painting with. Once I've done that, then I start adding in my perspective lines because I've already figured out the basic uh, layout for my image, just with basic silhouettes. This allows me to make sure that all the construction elements um, and the visual atmosphere is very appealing before I start moving on to adding some more details in the rough concept. So as you can see I'm figuring out the rough uh, outer structure of the building and from this rough structure I start figuring out okay where's the porch going to be, uh, I know I need to have an indoor garden, where is that going to be, uh, so I start including those different elements and different aspects that I know need to be included in this image uh, once I have the basic uh, composition figured out. Once my main focal point is, is pretty much done, because I already know that I want the main focal point to be obviously the rabbit's house, he needs to be very wealthy too in my storyline. So it's important that he has a very prominent house and that you can actually see that he is well off. Um, so as a result, uh, he has one of the larger houses that are essentially designed for one person. Um, so I'm working on some that are housing units next to it now. So these are not going to be as elaborate as his house, uh, but they still need to fit with the overall design elements that I have. So as you can see I'm roughing that out. I'm trying to keep a, a concisive style to all these buildings as well, so I'm trying to repeat the same visual elements and visual language throughout the rough concept. So I know I need a street, um, so I've roughed that out, and I'm actually going to be including some uh, high-rise buildings. So these won't be as high as the buildings that we're used to in our daily lives, but they will still be fairly high up, um, probably a maximum of about five or six stories. So taking that into account, um, I essentially develop the concept for those buildings uh, based on those criteria. So I'm just working now. I'm actually, I have actually changed uh, brushes now. I'm actually using more of a sketching brush. Um, this brush is a brush that I developed uh, thanks to a tutorial that another artist had posted online. Essentially, it's a very uh, gritty brush. Um, you could actually just use a regular texture brush and just lower the size to an infinitesimal amount so that it's a pretty much just one point in size. By doing that you end up having a very detailed brush that works really well for figuring out line work and that somewhat looks organic as well. So as you can see I'm working out the porch elements and figuring out how that's going to tie into the road as well. So all these are important elements that I'm trying to include. And now I've started moving into the background buildings as well. And this entire uh, portion actually doesn't take very long. It's the cleaning up of the line work that takes the longest and is the most time consuming, mainly because I'm going straight from a really rough concept to a full layout um, without any uh, pre-done concept art beforehand. Um, if I had some pre-done concept art, then I'm working for something that I already have the reference material for, so I'm not thinking about adding new elements, generally. Uh, you do have to make some uh, judgments on uh, what portions would be what and what would change as well. But in this case, uh, because I'm doing everything from scratch, that's not the case. It gives me both a bit more liberty when I'm actually working on the piece. However, it also means that I have to be very technical in my work. So I'm thinking constantly about the perspective and the composition and whether or not the structure makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, I need to figure out why and make changes if I can. So even at a rough concept stage, it is important to keep those elements in, uh, in mind as you're working.
So I'm just figuring out whether or not I'm going to be adding some uh, fence elements, um, whether or not uh, they'll have essentially uh, light sources on the rows like we do. Uh, it depends on the era and their technology. So the technology that's in the society would actually uh, heavily uh, influence how uh, the area is lit. Trying to break out, um, break up some of the structure too, so that it's not uh, too too repetitive, and it is a bit more interesting as a structure. Uh, essentially, the more I flesh out this portion uh, in the initial stages, in the rough stages, uh, the less time I will be wasting when I'm actually working out the proper structure. Uh, that's the reason why I actually add very early on the perspective lines. I add those mainly because it makes it a lot easier um, as I work. Just working on the foreground building right now. And I've essentially cheated the perspective in this building. Uh, mainly for two reasons, because this one can actually be closer to the viewer. It could be actually from the adjacent side of the road as well. So this is the final rough concept. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you guys soon. So thank you and take care.